Hello, and welcome to Talk Tech. I'm Kristen White, and here with me is Jim Finnegan, Senior Vice President of Silicon Engineering at Netronome Systems. So Jim, tell me about Netronome. Well, <coughs> Netronome has been in existence, I guess, for about uh, four or five years now. Um, it's a privately held company um, uh, funded by VCs. The VCs include um, 3i and um, Tudor Technology. Um, we have about 112, 115 employees, and we're doing some quite interesting work, which I'm sure we'll talk about. So I understand your focus is on network processors. Yeah, the, 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 so, so the background to the people at Netronome is invariably in networking. Um, roughly about um, you know a third or half of the employees came from four systems. The rest of the team um, pretty much um, comes from companies like Intel. There's a very large contingent from Intel sure. because we, we've actually acquired some significant technology from Intel and that's, that's the basis of some of the work that we're doing moving forward. So what are some typical ap applications? We really are targeting three distinct um, areas. Number one is those um, applications, typically the TEMs, telecom equipment manufacturers, Cisco, Alcatel, Huawei, p p people like that, who build a um, you know, set of um, uh, um, uh, you know, MSSs, routers, um, a whole set of um, products. So that's that's one customer. Okay, switches and routers. That's, that's what we, <coughs> um, a second class of customer would be the um, appliance vendors. And typically, the appliance vendors have used, uh, have typically had a, um, a software algorithm or a software application. And they have typically relied upon using um, standard server um, hardware. And <coughs> that has worked fine. Um, they haven't had to make any hardware investment of any significance because they're able to use off the shelf servers and off the shelf um, network interface cards. However, when you get to 10 um, gig Ethernet and above, it doesn't work anymore. Okay. And the reason that it doesn't work anymore is because potentially you can just um, overflow um, or overload the um, uh, core IA processor, um, which is unable to deal with um, traffic at minimum size packets, particularly where you have applications with a large number of um, flows. So consequently, you need to do a level of intelligent um, processing. So that's that's where we can offer um, okay. our our processor, um, which has some you know spe you know very specific attributes. The third application is basically um, associated with the data center, and in the data center, um, essentially Intel's um, multi-core processors have won. But again, there is a, a general problem, and the general problem is is that you know for new types of applications, think of um, you know YouTube, um, that kind of uh, um, application where you have minimum size back-to-back -back, um, small packets. Um, and a large number of users, you know, basically um, uh, where, where you're using your uh, um, data center as your web server, then lo and behold, um, once again, you have the same problem of potentially overloading the um, IA cores. Um, so what you need to do is a level of um, pre-processing. Well, that pre-processing includes um, classification, may include, for example, in the future, um, things like um, security. So you may have to do a level of encryption and decryption. Um, and these offloaded functions can be done with, as I say, these, these dedicated um, processors. Once again, we have the ability of front-ending um, the networking traffic and making sure that only the data that needs to go to a particular um, core ends up at that core or in that core's memory. So how does it look at that data and, and um, how is it able to recognize where it should go? A very good question. So typically, uh, and this is perhaps one of the key distinctions between how people classically think about um, network processors, people classically think about network processors as looking at particular um, headers. So you have you know, your um, source destination type address and you have your um, IP header. And what typically you do is you look at that, you make some decision, and then point the, um, uh, um, the actual data somewhere else. That's fine. But where you, in actual fact, um, need to look deeper into the packet to make decisions okay. for, as I say, this new um, type of traffic, then you can't be dependent upon um, having fixed uh, or making assumptions around um, fixed um, address points where you can pick up addresses. You may have to look deeper and say, well, geez, you know, the uh, 27th, 28th um, bits deep inside the packet. 
So, so what that means is you need to be able to process the packets in real time. So that's, okay. that's, a, that's a very distinct um, difference. So to do this deep packet inspection, your processor has to be very fast, right? Correct. So Correct. How, how is it? How, how is the architecture such that it can be so fast? Well, t two things. It has to be very fast, and secondly, it has to be um, um, very fast, um, such that not only uh, um, is the processing element itself able to run very fast, like um, 1.4 um, gigahertz, um, but in addition, you need to have multiple threads because you probably are aware of the, the, the quote unquote the the wall that that was hit between the rate of progress of uh, uh, um, increased um, processing capability versus the um, slower rate of progress in terms of memory access capability. So what you need to do is you need to have a whole bunch of um, mechanisms that basically translate into threads. So as one packet comes in, you start processing in one thread. When you run into um, uh, memory latency issues, you execute the next threads. So that you're constantly, okay. um, you know, executing and not sort of stalled on getting data back from memory. Okay, so a lot of parallel it's parallel processing. Exactly, okay. exactly. And so, so it's parallel in two senses. Number one, lots of cores, lots of micro engines. Okay. And like how many cores? Um, so we can have, as I said, in the first uh, um, chip. 40. In, in the second device, we'll have um, 64, um, at least 64. And each one of those has eight threads per core. So hence you end up with notionally um, a pool of threads or a team of threads is another expression that, that people use. So in terms of um, fabrication or manufacturing, do you do any of that or prototyping? Are you, do you have those capabilities in-house? Um, well, so, uh, you know, again, for a 1.6 um, 65 nanometer um, device, um, it's, it's, there's just a huge amount of um, simulation which has a strong reliance on a very um, uh, um, detailed and randomized um, approach to ensuring um, technical correctness. So our approach is to basically you know, just beat the hell out of the um, um, <laughs> silicon until it's correct. Now, all of that precedes giving a, a, um, you know, the GDS a, a, um, a set to the foundry. They build the product. I see. So those foundries, um, do they do prototyping or do they do manufacturing, production? We have a very um, uh, maniacal, um, almost fanatical, religious approach to things have to be correct first time. Okay, so you want it right the first time, so you don't have to do many rounds of prototyping. No. So what's your company's biggest technical challenge been so far? Uh, that's a very interesting question. I would say <laughs> I would say our biggest challenge, perhaps not our biggest technical challenge, but our, certainly one of our biggest challenges has been um, negotiating uh, uh, um, uh, legal agreements with Intel's lawyers. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, which, that. I don't know whether we're supposed to say that or not, but certainly I, would, <laughs> I, I personally would say that as a, as a significant um, challenge. So what's your role in the company as head of silicon engineering? Well, that's a good question too. What would my <laughs> role be? I think my role is to um, um, alternatively be um, cheerleader, um, um, the guy with the bat, um, the guy <laughs> who encourages, um, and uh, as I say, you know, hopefully with um, sufficient uh, um, uh, um, battle wounds to to know when to avoid or negotiate a particular approach. Um, so I, I, I'm just a, a, I'm very enthusiastic about um, building this technology. Well, it was great speaking with you today. You too. <laughs> Thanks for taking the time. It Thanks. was a lot of fun. Thanks very much. I appreciate <laughs> the opportunity of um, telling you a little bit about our technology and Netronome. Definitely. Thank and you. And thanks for watching Talk Tech.